G'day Art Snackers, my name is James of James Luke Burke Creative and welcome to another month of Art Snacks Box Freestyle where we take the supplies from the January 2023 Art Snacks Plus Box, experiment with them to within an inch of their lives and then hopefully create a masterpiece for the hashtag Art Snacks Challenge. This month's fun fact is well, back in 2019, I started a five-year journal, and this year is the final year I am filling it out. And so now I have a little memory book that has five years of my life, and is one of my favorite possessions. <laughs> and I share it on Instagram all the time, so go check it out if you're curious. Anyway, let's get into the box and see what we have to play with today. Here is the Art Snacks Plus box for January 2023. Here's everything inside. Let's unwrap that little green burrito and take a closer look at what we'll be playing with today. First up in the plus box, we have the Strathmore Vision watercolor paper pad in size 9x12. There are 30 sheets of 300 GSM paper in there. And we have the Mavi Uchida Color In Le Plume 2 double-ended markers, a set of six in the plus box as well. I have two Stabilo Woody 3-in-1 pencils. I have number 470, which is like an aqua color, number 301, which is more of a peach, a Daniel Smith Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine Watercolor Half Pan, Tombow Mono Twin Permanent Marker, and a Princeton Snap Series 9650 Golden Synthetic Brush Stroke Half. The sticker, the snack, let's get set up and play. Alright, it would kick things off really well by writing the wrong year. It is actually January 2023, so just ignore that. I don't know how I missed that. Um, it, you know, New Year, same brain. <laughs> I'm still hopeless. I'm sure I'm not the only one that made that mistake though. Very common mistake in January's. Um, anyway, let's get on to the products. I'm going to read you some of the menu information here. We'll start with the Combo Mono Twin Permanent Marker because that's what we've got up in the top left, uh, top right corner, sorry. Make a permanent mark with the Tombow Mono Twin. I'm a twin, that's one of my fun facts. This is a new product as well. This black marker features two durable tips, a wide chisel, six millimeters, and a fine bullet, two millimeters. The smear-proof oil-based ink works on a variety of surfaces. Now, I don't usually test water solubility with water ba uh, oil-based products because it doesn't really work well together, oil and water, you know the deal. Also with alcohol-based markers, we've kind of seen enough of the uh, Ox Freestyle experimentations to know that that doesn't really do much. So I kind of skipped out on that. The uh, next product we tested were the Mavi Uchida Le Plume 2, uh, the set of six markers. Very beautiful, vibrant set there. You can get a really gorgeous rainbow with them. Two different nibs, one awesome marker, meet the Le Plume 2, a watercolor marker with a brush tip and extra fine tip. And the extra fine tip is like a pen tip, not a bullet tip. So kind of a unique feature in those. The bright water-based ink can easily be blended and stays wet longer than the average marker. Enjoy a variety of colors with this set of six. Yeah. Absolutely, enjoyed those. Uh, the paper, it's really hard to kind of describe the papers because I think papers are really, it's really all dependent on the supplies you want to use with them as well. This paper held up really well. I thought a unique feature of this was that it had that gray uh, cover so you could rip off the front page and design your own cover for your own sketchbook, like your own sketch notepad. It's just a customizable cover. I thought it was really interesting. Um, but yeah, cold press watercolor paper, that is my favorite. And 300 GSM, great way to hold up two water applications. So that was really nice. Uh, one of my favorites, and this is a staff favorite as well, the Stabilo Woody 3-in-1 pencils. I was skeptical when I saw these because I just felt like ergonomics wise, it might, like the short stubby look of the pencil, I thought it wouldn't, ironically, work well in my short stubby hands, <laughs> but I loved it. I don't know, there was something about the, uh, the, the way that the it just kind of melted into the paper, how buttery smooth it was. It's very much a mixture of an aqua pastel and a crayon and a pencil. I just really, really liked it. So I am keeping an eye out for a whole set of these, actually. Let me read you some of the info on those. These are a staff favorite. Stabilo Woody is a colored pencil, wax crayon, and watercolor all in one. Its extra thick lead contains eight times as much color as a standard colored pencil and is perfect for coloring large surfaces. I agree. You'll achieve vivid, smooth lines that offer you great coverage and even show up on dark paper. I tested that over there, you can see those. These, this aqua and this peach didn't have a lot of white filler in them. Of course, it did still show up over the dark black swatches, but yeah, I mean, I think the aqua did a little bit better. Obviously, the lighter colors will show up better, um, but yeah, I mean, both still did. So I would say that is absolutely true as well for those colors. Uh, brush the strokes with some water and watch the pigment melt into your surface. Absolutely. It is one of those things that if you do draw on the paper first, and again, this is specific to the paper that you use as well as the, the way in which you apply the pencil or the crayon. I don't, what should I call it? Yeah, pencil. It says pencil. 
um, you will still have some of those initial sketch marks on the bottom like the I say it, it kind of stains the paper and then when you go to paint over the top of it and activate that that pencil you're still going to have the sketchiness underneath so that is a very specific type of look if you were just using it as a watercolor I would just scribble it onto a palette and activate it on a palette and then use it um, but I actually I kind of like having the pencil texture underneath the watercolor I think it's just another layer of um, the texture that I think works really well. So we have the Daniel Smith Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine Watercolor. This is limited edition. This unique vibrant blue watercolor is made from a gemstone that comes from the Sleeping Beauty Mountain in Arizona where Daniel Smith found a deposit that meets their high expectations. It's light fast and permanent with none of the transient color fade that most turquoises have. Turquoise. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say it, sorry. You'll experience granular washes and true brilliance with this paint. It does granulate, it's a really beautiful granulating, I think very light turquoise colour. Um, I think it also is playing against the very vibrant aqua colour that I have from the Stabilo Woody pencil. So, uh, you know, obviously that colour theory there, it's kind of uh, playing off that, but it does granulate really beautifully. I've been using this Sleeping Beauty color for a long, long time. I'm really glad to have a new pan of it because it is not that easy to get your hands on. Uh, so yeah, really treasure that little half pan. And it is my preference to work from dried half pans of watercolor rather than tubes. I just find it a lot more convenient. And I do carry around, I think it's a set of 36 watercolors in a little travel tin, and those are all dried out half pans. Uh, and I'm, yeah, I'm really happy to have an extra Sleeping Beauty, because I think my last one is right down to the bottom, like I've almost com completed the pan, so great timing. Thank you Art Snacks for that. <laughs> Daniel Smith watercolors are really beautiful. I know we've used a uh, watercolor stick, a pigment stick from one of the Art Snacks boxes before. Boxes? Boxes? Goodness, where'd that word come from? <laughs> uh, yeah, and if you've experienced the Daniel Smith watercolor, you just know they are a cut above. I really enjoy those. We have... A Princeton Snap Series 9650 Golden Synthetic Brush. Oh snap, this brush from Princeton is fun and functional. I did, sorry, I just feel so crazy when I read these sometimes. Ideal for watercolor and acrylic, this versatile tool has tackle on bristles that spring back into place and retain their shape use after use. You'll find this stroke shape is great for spreading paint evenly and quickly across your surface. So it does have that really flat, um, it, it's a stroke, uh, tip it's kind of like a flat square let me have a look at it how can I describe it except for a flat square yeah it looks like a rectangular brush <laughs> um, which is nice you know I actually like to use those instead of round brushes whenever I like to paint more expressively because if it's square and flat I find that I can't get into all the nooks and crannies that I want to and so I don't focus on detail as much as I focus on making expressive strokes or just kind of laying down color and watercolor and pigment. So I also like Taclon bristles. I find that they are really uh, long lasting and I usually put my supplies through like a lot of heavy use and a lot of, um, let's just say not great care. <laughs> the Taclon does kind of, it holds up to me. Like, let me just say, I put it through its own stress test and I do have a lot of Taclon bristle brushes that still uh, survive a lot of my my playtimes. I'm like Sid from Toy Story, but with art supplies. <laughs> anyway, we're getting into the Art Snacks Challenge. Let me play you a little bit of music before I start talking about this. I love mermaids. I don't I don't think this is a state secret. If you've known me longer than 25 seconds, you probably know that I love mermaids. <laughs> They're just every time I draw a mermaid, I am immediately transported back to my inner child and what is art good for if not to connect with yourself? <laughs> Look, it feels great. It feels great for me to draw a mermaid. I'm always drawing them. I'm drawing them really neatly. I'm drawing them really wild. I'm being expressive. I'm being you know, really clean and neat, like any any type of way I can do it with any art supply I can do it, I think I'll always be drawn 
to mermaids, and I always have been. I don't really know where it comes from. I have a million and one mermaid stories, but the one I really like to share is, um, <laughs> well, I love two I like to share. One is I used to have Barbies, and I would always try and get the Barbies with the longest hair, because I would take them to the public pool, and I would lay down on the side of the pool and put the Barbie in and just swim her like a mermaid and just watch her hair float through the water. There's something about that synthetic plastic hair that just undulates through the water and I just I there was something about it that I could be fascinated with for hours literally hours I mean I wouldn't get in the pool if I got in the pool I'd be with the Barbie I would wish I had that long hair and I'd stick my ankles together and try to you know swim like a dolphin <laughs> and live my best mermaid fantasy but yeah, it was really about the hair. You know, actually, when I grew my hair out and I went swimming, I finally felt what that what that felt like. It was exactly how I thought it would feel. But I didn't realize how heavy wet hair is when it's long and you get out of the pool. I, like, every time I would come out of the water, I was like, oh, it's weighing on my neck. <laughs> anyway, my long hair days are gone. But, yeah, so that's that's one story I like to tell. The other one is when I was younger. I would say I might have been, like, six, maybe six or seven I used to, we go to this caravan park every year uh, when I was growing up for Christmas holidays, like just after Christmas. My whole family's been going there for four generations. It's a really sleepy coastal beach town up in the mid north coast of Australia. And it's called Southwest Rocks. There's a little place there called the Mermaid Pond as well. And my family would take me there all the time and they would say there's mermaids there. And I'm thinking, well, why are we always going at the wrong time? Because I haven't seen them. In my head, I'm picturing my favorite Disney scene from Peter Pan, the Mermaid Lagoon. And I'm wondering why there's all these beautiful rocks, there's this gorgeous water, the sun's out, where are the mermaids? Like, there's, there's just no way you're taking me to the mermaid pond and I can never see them. And I was going into the reception area at the caravan park because they have a very specific brand of chocolate milk that I really liked. I still like it <laughs> to this day. Um, anyway, so I used to go in there all the time with my little Christmas money and buy the chocolate milk and I'd stand and, uh, you know, open it by this big fish tank. And there was a bunch of seahorses in this fish tank. And the lady behind the reception desk one day told me, oh, did you know that mermaids ride the seahorses to get around the ocean and I like it just clicked I thought this is this is what I've been missing this little piece of the puzzle is why I have never seen a mermaid in real life because my family have neglected to tell me that mermaids are one to two inches tall because they ride seahorses so therefore that's how tall they are they need to be able to fit on them and so they're much smaller than I thought here I am looking for human-sized mermaids, and they're not, they're tiny. So I, here I am thinking, I figured this all out, I can't believe it, this, this is what I needed. And when we went back to the mermaid pond, my eyes were, I mean, at water level, trying to look for the teeniest, tiniest mermaids. <laughs> I was in every little pocket of water, every little puddle, every everywhere, all over the mermaid pond trying to find them. And uh, every time I would see like a little glisten off in the water, I'd think, oh, one just went away, like she just, she swam over there and I just missed her. So anyway, one, one of my other little stories, I just loved it. I just, I find it fascinating that like, my deductive reasoning at that age, like, and I, I really felt like I'd figured it out. But anyway, mermaids have just always been a bit of a fantasy for me. I love to be able to connect back to my inner child. You know, as lo a lot of what I'm doing in art and journaling these days is connecting to who I am now, like who I've grown to become or who I'd like to still grow to become or tapping into you know, I've, I've tried to explain this before during a workshop I did, but very layered emotions. Like when I was a kid, I think when most people were children, we tend to experience one or two emotions at a time. Like maybe if you're lucky, it's usually just one emotion at a time. Um, and you know, through life and experience, I, I likened it to Inside Out. When you get those, uh, if you've seen the movie, the Pixar movie Inside Out, they have this, this little core memories, but some of the core memories are yellow to represent that they're joyful and some of them are red to represent that they're full of anger and frustration and when you get older you know the same memory can have a bunch of different emotions attached to it because you've lived these experiences that have kind of painted your experiences in really layered ways and you know that's something that i really like to dis dis explore wow discover and explore <laughs> in my work now uh, but there are those moments where I really like to just try and connect to my inner child, to forget all of my, you know, very layered experiences as an adult and this very complicated feeling I might feel having grown up. And I really like to return to just the most innocent, pure time in my memory 
when I was just a child and everything was just exciting and I just I didn't have to I didn't have to process more than what was happening like the mermaid fits on a seahorse so she is small and now I can find her and that is something that I hope you can find in art too uh, you know that inner child that loved to draw loved to paint loved to create and loved to show people that's something that I love to show as well and I'm, I enjoy still getting a chance to show you guys so that's it for today hope you enjoyed it there we go, that's it for Art Snacks Box Freestyle January 2023. If you would like to join us, you can use the code JAMES10 at checkout for 10% off. And don't forget to share your work with us in the Art Snacks Mix community and on social media using the hashtag Art Snacks Challenge. I hope you had a wonderful start to 2023. I'll see you again soon. Bye.